Welcome to LabMiz.com in our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find a complete list of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to continue from our previous lab with AnyConnect Radius authentication with Cisco ACS. We will look at how we can use directory attribute and user custom attributes to control VPN access and statically assign IP address to VPN users. Here's our lab setup. We have a Cisco ACS version 5.4 running at the IPF.100, the domain control at the IPF.40. We have an ASA VPN firewall connected to the inside switch on VLAN 10 and connected to the outside test machine at VLAN 11. Now for a test user, we still have three users. Two of them are located on the AD and one is local to ACS. On the admin one, we will use the custom user attributes to allow VPN access and also assign a static IP of 11.111. For the local one user, we will use the custom attribute to deny VPN access. Now for the support one users, we will use the AD directory attribute to assign a static IP of 11.112. We're going to start off with looking at the AD directory attribute. So on the ACS, if you remember, when we first integrate the ACS to AD, we added the groups or the AD user groups to ACS, or ACS can use that as part of the conditions for the authorization policies. And also on top of that, you can pretty much use any of the user attributes that's tied to the user or AD user account. So if you look, let's pick support one because that's the user we're going to be using here. So any of these attributes, as you can see as the field is populated, you can use those whether to use it as part of authentication conditions or even the results. So an example that we are going to be doing here is to configure a static IP address and we're just going to use a description field for that. So here for support one, we have 11.112 IP address configured. So now if we go back to ACS and search for a lookup support one and select, you can see these are all the user attributes that ACS obtain from the AD user account. And if you look up the description attribute, we see here it's type string and for the value is the IP address that we enter on the account of the AD. So we are going to select that. But since by default, the description is type string, but we want to use that as the IP address. We want to make sure the type of the attribute matches to the purpose that we're going to use it for. So we're going to convert the string to IP address in this case. Okay, then we save change. So that is for AD directory attributes. Next, we're going to look at the local user custom attribute. So under the system administration and dictionary identity, internal users. So you can pretty much create any attributes that you want to tie to the user. So things like string, integer, IP address, boolean, date, or enumeration. So some of the things that we're going to do here is a simple Boolean, whether or not to allow a user a VPN access. We're going to call it VPN access. And it says it's going to type, be type Boolean, being true or false. And by default, we're going to use false. And we're going to use this as part of our authorization condition. And that's why we need to check the box right here to add it as, to add it to a policy condition. And we will call it VPN access for condition. Okay, submit. We also want to be able to statically assign IP to individual users, so we need to create another attribute, which we will call VPN static IP, and this one will be type IP address. We're going to leave the default value blank, and we're going to make it optional, so we're not going to check on mandatory, since it's going to be the value they will be assigning as part of authorization result. We're not going to check the add policy condition box. Okay, submit. Now that we have the additional user attributes created, we have to go back to our user. You can see here we only have the local one user that used the local username and password. But if you want to utilize for, in our case, your admin one, we want admin one to be able to utilize local user attribute. What you have to do is to create a user with identical username. So that would be admin one. Group is not really relevant here, so we'll just leave it at the default. For password type, if you want to continue to have the user authenticate using password that's located in AD, then you can selectively choose what identity stores you want to authenticate against as far as the password. 
So we're going to specifically set authenticate against AD for this user, but we're just going to utilize your attribute, uh, local attribute here. So to allow VPN access, you can see these are the two custom user attribute that we created. So we want to allow the VPN access, we're going to switch that to true. And then for static IP, we said we wanted to have the IP of 11.111. .11. Okay, anything else you can just leave at default because we just want to leverage these two attributes right here for this particular user. Okay, submit. Now for local one, since we want to deny VPN access, we can just leave it that default and we don't have to assign any static IPs. Okay, so just want to show you there. For the support one, since we're not utilizing any ACS custom attributes, we do not have to create an account for that. Now that we have for user admin one, this exact same username for both local and AD, but we first want the local accounts to be looked up before the AD to make sure that these attributes right here are utilized. Otherwise, the ACS will go directly to AD and won't even look at these information right here. So what we need to do under the identity store sequence, so far we only have create the one that looks at AD before local. So now we need to create a identity store sequence to look at local before AD. And that's going to be password base. So it will be user host and then AD and submit. Now to be able to push down or have the ACS assign static IP as part of the radius reply, we have to modify or update our authorization profile. And these are the two profiles that we have created in the previous lab. So first with the network admin, the radius attribute that you, that you need for statically assigned IP is frame IP address right here. And instead of statically configure a value, we want it to be dynamic because we want to reference it back to the attribute that is assigned per user. So for internal user, here we have VPN static IP attribute type IP address. You can see right here the attribute type that is defined as part of the radius standard attribute has to match the custom attribute type. Again, common mistake forgot to add that so let me let me do that one more time so frame ip address dynamic internal user okay add submit and then for the network support we said we want to reference the ad directory attribute so what we need to do is under radius attribute again frame ip address dynamic and we're going to get acs to look up ad for that and for some reason we have no data display, that means we probably did not save that either. So let's go back to here. Yep, we modify, we forgot to replace it. So edit, IP address, make sure you replace. You can see right there, that's a good example when the type doesn't match, so it won't even show up for you to select. Because the type, the AD attribute type was a string, but we were looking for IP address type. So again, let's go back to authorization profile, network support, rated attribute, frame IP address, dynamic. There you go, now it shows up of type IP address. Almost there, there you go. I must did it again and then just add, submit. Okay, now we need to modify our identity under the LM VPN. Just like I mentioned, instead of looking at the AD, first and then local we need to make sure we look at local and then ad for the local custom user attribute to be utilized then save and now we we can modify our authorization rule okay now we have to customize or add one more condition which is based on the user custom attribute that we added which is let's see if we can find a name right here vpn access con it's okay and for the network admin, we want to make sure this particular value here is equal to true. Otherwise, we do not want this rule to be matched. And the same thing goes with local admin. This is for local account, a local one. It has to be true. But for the network support, we want them to access VPN no matter what. Okay, we'll save change. Make sure everything looks correct. And now we can go ahead and start testing. So now let me bring back the windows to our test machine. Okay, first we're going to initiate the connection. And then we're going to lock in as 
admin1, connect. See, we are authenticating. So going back to monitoring and report with radius authentication. You can see we have successfully authenticated with admin1 and downloadable ACL get pushed. But what we're interested in is authentication result. You can see right here, frame IP address attribute has been sent to the ASA. So at this point, if we go and look at the IP address of the VPN, you can see right here, the static IP that we assigned to the user shows up as the client IP, 11.111. Okay, if you look down at the authentication details, you can see here for other attributes, we got additional field that shows up. One is VPN access equal to true, and the other one is VPN static IP, and both of these are the one that we just created in this lab. Okay, so we know that our static IP assignment is working, and this is for the custom user attribute local to ACS. And again, just to prove ICMP is not working because we have a downloadable ACL that blocks that, but the web browsing to the inside server should be working. And now we see we can hit our ACS page. Okay, so let's go ahead and disconnect. Next, we're gonna try support one user. And we say for support one, we should be able to VPN in and assign a static IP of 11.112. This defined as part of the AD user account. So support one, and then Cisco. Let's check our authentication. Again, we got a green successful authentication and hopefully we see the IP, there you go, gets assigned as well. And just to remind you, this particular value is looked up from this description field right here. Okay, and now if we go, the ping is working, so we know that's downloadable ACL is working. And just to verify our client IP on the VPN is 11.112 as we expect. Okay, and the last user we want to test is local one. And local one should be denied access completely because we said the VPN access attribute was set to false. So let's try that local one Cisco. And you can see we cannot log in. And at this point, we should be able to see the log. See right here, authorization profile is deny access. And so local one is being denied access because there's no rule that can be matched. And if you look at authentication detail, Right here, we have VPN access equal to false. So we know that is working correctly as well. Okay, so before we wrap up, just one last quick notes I wanna show you. You might be wondering why we are using a description field to configure our static IPs. As some of you might know that there's a dial-in tab right here and there's a few that looks perfectly appropriate for what we're trying to do, which is static IP. But you can see I've tried this before and actually we can try it again right now. So what happened is if you assign an IP right here, let's go ahead and apply and click OK and then go back to Active Directory. And Attributes. And we look up the support one one more time and you just look down for dot one one three that we enter. You can see you, see, you can't even find that IPs, but what that attribute really is, is this one right here, MS radius frame IP address. And the reason is by default, that particular field is type integer 64. And this is how the IP address get converted to. But somehow if you attempt to choose these, trying to use it. So let's go ahead and try that and just to see what it looks like. And like I mentioned, we need to convert the type so it matched the type IP address. So let's go ahead and match IP, replace, and save. All right, let's make sure that took it. Okay, so we got this IP address. And then we go back to our authorization profile, go to support, and modify our radius attribute. So click on that, edit. Instead of description, we want to pick MS radius frame IP address. Click OK. Don't forget to replace, submit. And now if you're trying to lock in using support one, 
Let's bring that up and let's monitor the client IPs. So you can see instead of getting the dot 113 as we expected, instead it's grabbing IP from the DSCP. That means the static IP assignment is not working. So to get a lot of insight, we can always look under the authentication detail. Because authentication works fine and we can't even get the access, but it's just it's not being assigned the correct IP. Under authentication result, obviously we're not expecting to see the frame IP address being sent down. And if you look at the step, if you look at closely, there's a lock message that said some of the retrieve attributes contain value that are incompatible typed. So that value is discarded. And this is referring to the IP address field or attribute that we're trying to utilize from AD. So somehow, for some reason, there's an issue as far as the type that's not being compatible. It's not like converting a string to the IP type. Somehow it doesn't like converting the integer to IP types. If you happens to have a solutions or insights of how to utilize that field under Dowlin, then feel free to pose your comments or solutions down below at the comment section. But for now, it's working just fine using the any other field that's type string, just like how we're doing it here with the description. Okay, so now that I've shown you that, we can wrap up our video on ACS 5.4 directory attribute and user custom attributes. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.